Hey everybody, it's Jane from Norman S. Wright. In my last couple of videos, I mentioned how there was a water loop from the condenser to the cooling tower. So I think it'd be a good time to talk about cooling towers. So let's do some basics of cooling towers. Let's get started. <music> tower is a heat exchanger that uses evaporation to remove heat from water-cooled chiller systems. Let's move this up into the corner a little and let's draw a cutaway view of a cooling tower. Let's draw a fan on top of the cooling tower and we'll just draw the outside right now. Water, which has been heated by the condenser, is pumped into the cooling tower through pipes and sprayed through nozzles onto banks of media called fill. Water sprayed from the nozzles will run down the fill like this, slowing the flow of water through the cooling tower and exposing as much of it as possible for maximum air water contact. As the water flows through the cooling tower, it's exposed to air, which is being pulled through the tower by the electric motor driven fan at the top. The air and water meet, a small amount of water is evaporated, creating the cooling action. As the air with the evaporated water rises, it hits this section here called the drift eliminator. This forces the air through the zigzag section, which allows the moisture in the air to condense and run back down the sides and be reclaimed by the system. After passing through the fill, the water collects in a basin at the bottom of the cooling tower and the cooled water is then pumped back to the condenser where it starts the process all over again. A little bit of the water will be lost to blow down, which is the water that is drained from the tower to reduce the concentration of salts that were left behind when the water evaporated. So let's make a little more room. So what I've drawn is a mechanical draft cooling tower. Mechanical draft cooling towers use fans or blowers to create the air movement within the tower. These can either be induced draft or forced draft towers. Induced draft cooling towers have a fan that's located at the top of the cooling tower, pulling the air through the tower. Forced draft cooling towers have a fan located at the bottom, pushing the air into the tower. So you can see with the fan on top of my drawing, it's an induced draft tower. There are also natural draft cooling towers that rely on the natural buoyancy of the warm air inside the tower to create the airflow. But these are primarily used for power generation. They don't use fans or blowers and are typically larger in size and taller in height to allow natural convection to draw air through the tower. Let me make more room again so I can talk about counterflow and crossflow towers. So what I've drawn here is a counterflow tower. In counterflow towers, the water spraying into the tower over the fill flows downward while the air moves upward. In a cross-flow cooling tower, the water still moves downward, but the air flows across it horizontally. So let me draw that here. We'll put our fan on top, and then the fill will be on either side. So the water will come in at the top from the condenser, go down the fill just like in the counterflow tower, but the airflow will come in from the side on either side of this cooling tower, go across the fill, and then up out the fan. And then also at the bottom here, you'll still have the basin and the water returns back to the condenser from there. So that is an overview of cooling towers. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks for watching.